Adobe Camera Raw version 15 just added one of the most exciting features since the creation of raw processing itself, High Dynamic Range Output, or HDR. Now don't get confused with the old HDR term we've used for years. This is a completely different technology that offers the biggest improvement in image display that I've seen in decades. Before we use this new feature, we first have to turn it on. So go to Photoshop, Preferences, File Handling, Camera Raw Preferences, then head down to the Technology Previews area and you'll be looking for this HDR Output checkbox. This is only available on Mac OS at this time, so you won't see it if you're on a Windows computer. Once you check this, we'll say OK, and then also head down to the Technology Previews area in Photoshop where we have this precise color management for HDR display, and you wanna make sure that this is checked as well. The other feature lets you use HDR inside of Adobe Camera Raw. This feature has actually been around for a while, and this allows you to use HDR inside of Photoshop when you're working with a 32-bit version of the image you created with Adobe Camera Raw. So we'll say OK, and we're ready now to begin using the feature, so let's go open up some images. I've got several different raw images here. I'm gonna right-click and just open them into Adobe Camera Raw. We'll go and maximize the display here. And when you see this, you'll notice one little change on the screen, and that is there's this HDR button in the top right underneath the histogram. And other than that, you really wouldn't notice anything is different. But when you use this feature, some very cool things will happen. I'm just gonna click on it and notice that immediately this sky in this image got dramatically better. It is so much better here. Look at this from before to after. Notice the quality of the water. The water without HDR is nearly blown out here. It just looks very flat. And if we were to take the exposure slider in the image normally and bring it down, we'd see that there, the values are there. But we have to drop the exposure by about two stops. And so what's happening is in a raw file where there's all this bright detail, it sort of gets compressed in the brightest ranges of standard dynamic range. Let's zero this out though and take a look at high dynamic range where you see we've got this extra brightness and what's occurring is that it's getting pushed up into brighter values. What is on my screen here is brighter than what you can display normally on any regular screen. You can see at the top of the display here, the output values, I see this plus 0.9 for RGB as opposed to something darker where I'm seeing values like 1087 or 115, 110, 101. So these brighter values here, what's happening is they're getting pushed brighter than standard white. And the histogram is showing us an SDR range. This is classically what we would have across the whole histogram. It's now been compressed to half the display area. And then HDR, this is all the new brighter content. And we can see here, these vertical bars indicate the number of stops. So this is one stop brighter, two, three, four stops brighter. So I'm about two stops brighter in this area of content, which is what we saw when we went and just simply in the SDR version, turned down the exposure by about two stops. That's what's happening. All that compressed detail is coming out and we get a much more beautiful image where color in the sky shows through, richness in the clouds is available. We can see all the detail in the water. Now, not every image is gonna pop like this. It depends on how much you've exposed it to the right. If this image started out a bit darker, you may not see that. But once you've created this, we can edit it to bring out more detail. All the sliders we have here, they all work just like they did before with one difference that as I go and push up on something like exposure, eventually it's gonna clip, but I'll be able to push things much brighter than before. So if I brighten things through exposure, highlights, whites, anything I might do to this that's gonna push into brighter areas, I will keep that tonality, I will keep that color, and the result is a much better looking image with higher contrast and higher dynamic range. Let's look at several more examples. In the second one, I've also got a pretty blown out sky in order to get detail in the building. And I've already processed this. If I were to zero out the exposure, we can see there's pretty good detail in the sky, but the building, you know, like I said, is kind of a bit darker than I'd like here. Let me undo that back to where I was where we've got this brighter version. And what I can do now is just turn on HDR and all that extra content, instead of getting smushed near white, I'm able to see bright pinks in the sunset. I'm able to see brilliant oranges and yellows. I'm able to see the blue in the clouds. All that color detail is being retained in this image. Or for example, in city scenes here where these lights, they're really being kind of compressed. We're not seeing all the beauty of this light, but as soon as we turn on HDR, 
now we can pick up that additional detail. And of course, we can keep pushing. We can make this scene even brighter and push to levels that just wouldn't be possible before. If I go about a stop over here, this is still a pretty usable image in HDR, whereas if it's in regular SDR or standard dynamic range, you see we've just lost that detail. So all this extra HDR range, these extra four stops or so that we have are really going to help this image look much better. In this next one, again, you see a bright sky, looks fairly flat. We could process this in a number of ways to bring out this detail, or if we use HDR, suddenly we get this dramatically better starting point. And I would still exposure blend a scene like that. There's, there's still going to be differences I want to make in color or other details in the sky versus the foreground, but I've got a much better starting point with my RAW to work on this image. In this next example, again, very bright blown out sky. This is where a lot of these images really sing. If I turn on the HDR, you see how much dramatic, beautiful difference there is now between the lit sky and these darker clouds, which looks like the scene I was looking at as opposed to the raw file I have where things are quite flat. And if I were to bring the exposure down in order to see that detail, now I've got these very dark foreground details and I'm just constantly trying to figure out ways of compromising to take this very broad dynamic range of real world light and compress it down to the limited capabilities of a standard monitor. Whereas with the HDR, I can take advantage of my more capable monitor here, an HDR capable monitor that shows this brighter, more brilliant display. Here we've got another sunset and we'll see that the blue skies look much better. Some city lights. When I turn this on, you can see that they really truly glow. And I even have an example here. This is a merge to uh, HDR. This is something where you take a bunch of raw images in Lightroom, merge to HDR. I've got a tutorial on that and it outputs another DNG file. And you can take this raw file and take advantage of it in HDR as well. So it has all the raw processing capabilities and I can go tweak this however I might want it to work on this scene. So I can get a truly expanded dynamic range raw file and now truly extract the values of it with the HDR feature here in Adobe Camera Raw. In addition to what I've shown already with just enabling the feature and the histogram, there's a couple other things to note in the display here. Down below, you'll see this high dynamic range area, which is going to look like this when you first open up Adobe Camera Raw and only when HDR is on. If HDR is off, you won't see it, but when HDR is on, we'll have this option. And if we open it up, you have these two different options below here. There is this option to visualize HDR range. If you click on this, it shows you a mapping of which tones are where. And there's a little bit of a color key in the HDR histogram showing that the cyan is one stop overexposed, the blue is two stops, purple is three, this magenta is three stops. So if we go look at a brighter display here, you can see here is an area where it's the brightest in the screen. And you can make determinations as to how far you want to push your display because the number of stops that are supported by an HDR monitor depends on the monitor. If I have a less capable monitor, it might really only show about one stop of extra dynamic range. Whereas on the 2021 M1 MacBook Pro that has the XDR display from Apple, you will get a full four stops of extra brightness unless you've got your monitor brightness turned all the way up. So the amount of HDR headroom you have is dynamic based on the brightness of your display, but typically you're going to see anywhere from one to four extra stops and the result is just truly stunning. The other option down below here is this preview for SDR display. And the intent of this is to let you preview your HDR image as an SDR. So if I go and process my image for HDR, but then I want to output an SDR version to maybe print or to share with someone else, then we have some options here to determine how it would get processed. I could go and push up my highlights and maybe darken my shadows and whatever I want to do here. The preview I get is what would be used if I go and save this image. If I go click on this little save icon, you probably didn't even know this, but Adobe Camera has the ability to export images at least in the file opening dialog. So if we're in the Camera Raw filter, you won't see this, but the first time you open the image, you'll have these options and we could go and save this image as say like a, a JPEG and it would work for the HDR range because JPEG does not support high dynamic range content. And so we'd want to use this option to get our best looking preview. And of course it will never look as good as the HDR because HDR is just simply better 
but this lets you get your best version of an SDR. Now, if you want to save this as HDR, you can also do that with Camera Raw using that same option up top. You just want to change the file extension over to JXL. This is the JPEG Excel format, which you see here. You can just simply choose your quality, and then you want to make sure you enable HDR display and choose your color space. You have three different options, and I would just simply go with Rec 2020 or perhaps P3. This will give you an HDR capable file that you can share over email or on the web. A support for JXL is currently fairly limited, but it's a rapidly expanding file format that is going to be part of the future of sharing HDR images like this on the web. Let's close that and let's cancel out of this. I want to take a look and just show how we can also use this with an existing standard dynamic range image. So I have a TIFF file that I opened and it's not a raw file, but I can still take advantage of HDR to improve this image. What I'm going to do is go up to filter, go to the camera raw filter, which is also using ACR 15. And in here I can turn on HDR, which at the moment doesn't do anything because this is not a raw file with latent data that's been kind of compressed down to a smaller range. It's just the SDR data that I gave it from the TIFF, but I can go and I can expand these ranges. So I could go, for example, let's go slide down and I just hide this and slide down in the curves area, bring up the light slider to add some glow to the image. And you can see that the HDR range now I've got about two stops worth of extra brightness in my image. And if we just kind of look at this without the HDR, it would clearly blow out. And with, we get to this result. Or if we just kind of compare before, I process this as well as I could. I've got the full range of SDR in use here. If I hover over these values, they are showing up at a lab value in the histogram around 94. I'm not going to get much brighter than this and have anything that looks like a yellow sunset. So I've really used the full range available to me in standard dynamic range. But if I switch over to high dynamic range and we brighten this up, you can see how we get this just truly gorgeous display. And it can compare from before where we started to the finished HDR. And you can see what a dramatic improvement this is. Now, there is so much more to know about this new world of HDR than I could possibly cover in this video. So I've created gregbensphotography.com slash HDR to give you a number of resources to visualize how these images look before and after. And in fact, in this video, Due to the conflict between Chrome and the recording software, it actually doesn't show any real difference. But if you view this on a true HDR display like the 2021 MacBook Pro, you'll see a dramatic improvement with the images on the right. Also included on this page are a number of tests down below that help you determine to what degree your display does or does not support HDR. And there's also this free HDR ebook, which is about 25 pages long and goes into all sorts of details about what hardware you need, how to set it up how to export images for the web, etc. I look forward to many more videos on the topic. Please let me know in the comments below what questions you have, and I'll see you in the next video.